Hi everyone, it's Morty from Pelican Pod Travel Vlog. Today, we're headed to Brook Green Gardens in South Carolina, Merle's Inlet, where we find out that they got parking, because if not, I don't want to go. Brook Green Gardens is in Merle's Inlet, located about one hour north of Charleston, South Carolina, and about a half hour to 45 minutes south of Myrtle Beach. And when Archer and Anna Huntington bought property in South Carolina in 1930, the plan was to build a place for Anna to retreat and recover her strength from a recent diagnosis of tuberculosis. I won't speculate on why their plans changed, but 18 months later, it became a private not-for-profit called Brookering Gardens, a society for South Eastern Flora and Fauna, with three main purposes, to collect and display American figurative sculpture, to collect and preserve plants of the Southeast, and collect and preserve animals of the Southeast. And these trees you see along the path are live oaks and they're covered in Spanish moss. Spanish moss is an epiphyte, which means it's an air plant and does not rely on its host for nutrients. So unless it weighs down the branches in a dangerous way, it's generally good to leave alone. Throughout Brook Green, you will see this beautiful growth. Archer Milton Huntington was one of America's wealthiest people. He was a poet, industrialist, and founder of cultural public institutions, such as Brook Green Gardens. Anna Hyatt, later Huntington through marriage, was an award-winning sculptor who had a thriving career when they met. And she was the first female artist to create a public monument in New York City. Her famous piece, Joan of Arc. Later in this video, I will show plenty of Anna's sculptures. But for now, I'll take a look at some of the gardens and what used to be a plantation before the Huntingtons bought the property. None of this was done alone and at no small cost. Displays throughout the grounds pay tribute to those who helped achieve their goals, notably the Gala. The Gala are a subgroup of African American ethnic and their language and culture have preserved a significant influence from Africa as a result of their historic geographic isolation and the community's relation to their shared history and identity. Their language is a mix of Bahamian, Barbadian, Guyanese, Jamaican, and more, and is sometimes called Sea Island Creole. Charleston has some great museums as well as Georgetown, so check these out to learn more about the descendants of people enslaved by plantation owners. And again, this was before the Huntingtons 
and before it was converted to a non-profit. Brooklyn Gardens is in the Low Country, a geographic and cultural region on the southeast coast where salt marshes and biodiversity are everywhere. Once it was known for indigo and rice plantations. Be sure to visit brookgreen.org which has tons of information especially related to recommendations for a safe and happy visit. Steps they point out include be aware of your surroundings, admire but don't pick anything, do not approach, feed, or bother wildlife, avoid the edge of ponds and rice fields, no swimming, or waiting. Stay out of the water. You'll see later in this video a very good reason why. Wear closed-toed shoes. Stay on the paths. Bring sunscreen and insect repellent. You will need it. And at the time of filming, general admission included all gardens, all galleries, the Low Country Zoo, and I'll put a, a tour that I filmed in the link in exhibits in the Low Country History Center. So let's go take a look at some of the sculptures in the main gardens in general. Brook Green is accessible to people handicapped. There is a ton of free parking. They don't rent wheelchairs, so bring your own equipment. They have a cafe a quick service restaurant, and a sit-down restaurant. Check the site for reservations and hours. There's so much to discover here, both of hidden history and nature, and there's no end to the rows of outdoor sculptures featuring American figurative expressionism. And as promised, that sign there that says no swimming to the alligators. American Figurative Expressionism was a counter distinction to abstract expressionism at the time and addresses issues at the heart of the expressionist sensibility, such as personal and group identity in the modern world, the role of an artist as witness to violence and corruption, and the nature of the creative process and all of its implications. Brook Green is one of the largest collections in the world of this movement, thanks to the Huntington's. 
So I will be quiet for a little bit. Because everywhere you turn to look, no matter where you walk through Brook Green Gardens, you are bound to see art. So keep your eyes peeled and enjoy the next little bit and I'll see you towards the end of the video.
So much work by so many different artists, including Anna herself, Edward McCartan's Dionysus, Laura Garden Fraser's Pegasus, which is coming up in the next scene, which took her eight years to complete, Frederick Remington, Herbert Adams, Augusta St. Garden, Daniel Chester French, and many more. There's even a storage facility where everything is kept out and open to the public. Once you enter the garden, it's part of the display.
So plan on a day of wonder. Walking around, checking out the grounds. More than 2,000 sculptures by over 400 artists. This place is huge. Right now, as of filming this, if you buy general admission, you get seven days access. And I, I tell you, it would take at least two or three just to see some of the best of it. So put on some sunscreen, get some great walking shoes, head on over to Brooklyn Gardens. Signing off from the Pelican Pod Travel Vlog, this is Morty. Hope you've had a great time. Thanks for watching. See you next time.